Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining our Me Our Fine Art alumni session. Um, in this session, you'll be able to gain a deeper understanding of Angus's art practice, creative process and background as a student. At the end, there will also be an opportunity to meet Angus live, so feel free to send through any questions you may have for him. As always, RMIT will begin with an acknowledgement of country. RMIT University acknowledges the people of the Woiwurrung and Boonwurrung language groups of the Eastern Kulin Nation on whose unceded lands we conduct the business of the university. RMIT University respectfully acknowledges their ancestors and elders past and present. We hope you enjoy this session. Hi, my name is Angus McGeehan. I'm a visual artist and RMIT Fine Art alumni based here in Melbourne, Australia. For this year's virtual open day, I'll tell you about my time as an RMIT student. You'll gain insight into my art making process and I'll share some tips with you if you're interested in studying art. There will also be time to answer any questions you have as well. I've always been a creative type. Throughout high school, I shared a relationship with illustration and design, but I felt my passion for fine art beginning to develop at the age of 18. Drawing was a major part of my practice early on, but I discovered a real love for painting and eventually I also expanded into collage and sculpture as well. Following high school, I enrolled in the Diploma of Visual Art program at RMIT. I felt it focused much more on building fundamental art skills and knowledge, which was great as I didn't get the proper experience I desired in year 11 and 12. During this period, my confidence and ability as an artist increased a lot. I worked in a fun and inspiring environment with great lecturers and students. I then moved into the Bachelor of Fine Art program, which was definitely a step up. In my first year, I was encouraged to experiment and push myself into new avenues. At first, I found this really challenging, but soon realized that being comfortable could really stagnate your ability to create new and profound art. I began to work on larger services and incorporate new materials and methods into my process. I learnt a lot about contemporary art and abstraction which began to influence my work a lot more. After graduating, I've continued to push myself in new directions with my work. I've built upon both the practical and theoretical knowledge that I learned at RMIT and I've found new ways to promote and sell my work. I've really enjoyed the flexibility that a career as a freelance artist has given me and its potential for the future. Before I start a new artwork, typically I spend some time looking at previous paintings, sketchbooks, and source material from places like Instagram, Tumblr, or even magazines I've collected. I'm interested in aspects of philosophy, mythology, science, and pop culture, with the constants of design, film, and music always driving my creative needs. For this work in progress, you may have noticed that I'm painting on a loose piece of canvas against the wall. This is really effective because you can choose to stretch it over a frame once complete, or simply roll it up to put it away in storage. I've also chosen to paint on a black background for this piece, which works really well with vibrant colours that I'll be using. At this point in my practice, I don't really sketch or plan my paintings as you would typically think. I prefer to start with a blank canvas and use the marks and gestures to map out the painting as I go. Here you'll see I'm filling in large sections with simple forms and colours. They sort of act as the ground for the preceding layers to come. I'm already enjoying how the green and blue hues are looking against the black surface, so I'm filling in more space, applying the paint through a variety of methods, brushing, scraping and rubbing. As I do this, I create new gestures and textures to continue to build upon, each informing the next. The painting is beginning to take shape, and every layer is giving it more and more depth. This is one of the reasons I enjoy using acrylic paint for certain projects. It's versatile and fast drying. I can maximise the amount of layers and textures more efficiently than oil, gouache or watercolour.
I'm now beginning the process of promotion and reduction, applying the paint to areas and then wiping it off, adding spray paint, water and turpentine. These continue the promotion of the previous layers without covering them with new gestures or colours. At this point, I'm pretty happy with the underpainting and can start adding the larger, solid forms that will give the painting its form and composition. Like that initial mapping stage of the process, I again fill spaces with objects reminiscent of rocks, flowers, fungi, animals and bones. I like to use geometrical lines and shapes to create more depth and different focal points throughout the piece, effectively using rulers, objects and masking tape to give a sense of dimension.
This part of the process, which I refer to as the embellishment phase, is my favourite part. I decorate and play with different forms and images that weave in and out of the existing layer. It's important not to add too much to a painting at this stage, and knowing when to finish the work can be a real challenge sometimes. Although I don't consider my art practice to have a definitive style, I've developed certain aesthetics and characteristics that speak to my individual work. These embellishments act almost as a dialect unique to my body of work. If I'm going to suggest any piece of advice, it's not to make your work good or attractive, but try to make it unique. With enough practice and experimentation, your own art will be identifiable and idiosyncratic. Thanks again for joining me today. I hope I've inspired some of you, no matter what your ambitions are. If you're interested in my work and want to see more, you can follow me on Instagram or check out my website at angusmcgeehan.com.
Hello, everybody. Thanks for watching that video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, we've got a lot of questions coming through, so I thought I would jump on camera and answer a few now. Um, somebody asked, did you do the Bachelor of Arts or Foundation when you applied? Had you been working in painting or did you end up preferring that medium after you were in the course? Um, so when I applied for um, the Bachelor of Fine Art program, I was doing mainly drawing and illustration, but I started working more with painting um, because obviously I'd done the diploma. So I was doing a lot of um, sort of training and exercise in painting and it had improved quite a lot. So by the time I applied for it, it was, yeah, the bulk of my work was the painting medium. Um, and yeah, I felt pretty confident at that point. And I think that was one of the reasons I actually got into the course was because I'd sort of been more proficient in one thing. So if I was going to suggest anything about applying, it would be to maybe focus on one medium or, or a smaller range so you can get a really nice body of work. Um, Chloe asks, what's the best way to work through ideas and concepts when you're unsure of what the finished result could be? Um, I would say the best way to sort of work through that issue, because I think one of the problems with making art can be that you sometimes have a really grand idea or you've developed something that you think you know can be really promising and you're excited about and often if you start working towards a goal and you've got something very certain in mind it might not live up to what the idea is often you know the idea is grander than the result or the product so it's probably best not to put that sort of pressure on yourself to think oh you know i've seen a painting or an artwork that i really like and i want to do something that's as good as that and i know i have the ability to do that because often you will end up disappointing yourself so it's best to just sort of you know planning is good but also just go along with it and experiment and sort of just like let the work unfold and not try to you know form it into something that's in your head already so i've got some more questions here Someone asked, hi Angus, how does RMIT support you in terms of professionally selling or exhibiting your work? Um, so like many other degrees at RMIT, um, you can choose electives that you think would be best suited to maybe a skill set or a knowledge that you're trying to learn. Um, and they have certain courses that focus on, you know, industry and um, sort of building up your experience working with galleries or any place that will exhibit or sell your work. Um, personally, I found that it was easier just to sort of make connections with the people I was studying with and go out to as many exhibitions as possible and, and sort of just talk to people and learn things and read online. Um, of course, the university can help you that, but you'll also be going and visiting a lot of galleries and you'll be talking to your lecturers about this even outside of class. So it's something that just sort of comes naturally with studying art, I think. Uh, someone asked, what would you say to someone who wants to study art but is afraid of the risk involved? Um, there's risk involved in every course you're going to study, I guess. Um, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people that I studied with were, you know, serious introverts and they found it hard to speak up in class. You'd never be forced to do that. That's why, you know, people study art is because they express themselves through their work. So that's really what you should be focusing on is just expressing yourself through the work. You don't have to be a confident person. You don't have to be, you know, really ambitious or anything. Um, I know I really wasn't. I, I consider myself a confident person, but I never thought that I'd be the sort of person that would speak up a lot in class and I didn't and then initially I warmed up to it a bit more and I think as my work grew that made my confidence grow too and you sort of see that even in the people that are really shy or introverted they just come out of their shell by studying something like art. Somebody asked do you know did you know what you want to study fine arts after, did you know you want to study fine arts after school sorry uh, what else were you considering um, so I answered this question above but again um, I was really always really interested in design um, and architecture um, I love interior design I love um, furniture um, I love buildings I love all sort of architecture like that as well um, and if I didn't do something like that because I know often you do need pretty good grades which I didn't really have in high school um, I always considered maybe doing a carpentry course or even doing something like woodworking um, 
uh, in a more dedicated sphere. Um, some more questions here. All right. Uh, I've got a question here. Did you do you paint intuitively or with a plan ahead? Um, I used to plan a lot of my work. That's probably comes from that background in drawing and illustration and design. There is a lot of planning involved in that and a lot of sketching and reworking and, and concept conceptualizing of, um, of what you're going to produce. Um, but as I began to paint more, I was looking more at the artists that would work more intuitively and just sort of build upon the work. And I, I find that it's much more enjoyable. And like I said before, um, it's not about sort of just trying to reach the goal that's in mind, but just sort of enjoying what you're doing and, and having fun with it. And I find that's when you produce the best work. So yeah, working intuitively for me is much more desirable. More questions coming through. Just going to publish them so you guys can see these as well. Somebody's asked, um, what was it like when you had your folio interview selection task when you applied to RMIT? Um, so the folio interview, from what I remember, was a one-on-one -on -one or um, I think in my case, I might have actually had two lecturers that I sat down with. Um, you know, really basic sort of thing. You just sit down at a table, you lay out all your work, and they'll just ask you questions. And you know, it's just like having a conversation with someone that's interested in your work, and and they're not expecting you to have any sort of that academic knowledge or that you know art language that a lot of people think that we all can speak. You just sort of talk naturally about your work. Um, and just be honest with them and say what you want to learn and, and you know what are your goals what are your desires to study art um and you know if if they enjoy the work and they see this potential there that's sort of you know that's what's going to happen um so yeah it's important not to put too much pressure on yourself and you know think that you need to have some neat perfect folio like they teach in vca because it's actually very different they just want to see you know what your potential is to make art and how enthusiastic you are about it Lana asked Tyangus, do you make a living off selling artwork? Um, I don't make a living off it, but I do make money off it, which is good. Um, I still work two other jobs. So I work as a bartender and I also work as an art tutor for disadvantaged youth. So I've got some other job opportunities, um, but selling artwork for me does provide a nice little bit of income from now, from every now and then. Um, but yeah, I guess that's the goal for me is sort of making enough work and selling it and exhibiting it that I can it can be my sole income because um, that's what I've always wanted to do is, you know, not work for anyone, work for myself and build a real career out of it, which would be exciting. Somebody asks, what did you think or what was your thought process throughout the painting? Um, you laid quite a lot. So how did you decide that? Um, so like I said in the video, it's, it's something I sort of just built upon while I was studying. Um, and doing a lot of painting, painting, trying to paint every single day. That's what my whole objective was really while I studied and I still do that now. Um, so it's just something I've learned and practice upon is, is building layers and, and I worked a lot with abstraction and um, training in things like composition. That's really important for me is, is just learning how things fit together, um, which, which you, you you're not going to really learn from anyone. You're just going to sort of learn that from practicing and, and looking at art and, and reading about art. And, and again, the experimentation is really important. Some more questions coming through, which is great. Uh, somebody asked, how did RMIT help you develop your visual communication? Um, that's a tricky one. I don't really know how to answer that. I guess for me, the visual communication and how I could sort of get my ideas out of my head onto any sort of material or a physical product, essentially, 
is just by talking with people and like just sort of learning from other artists and talking to lecturers. I wouldn't say there was any sort of one course or any anything I learned in the degree that taught me how to do that. That was just sort of from living and working in that environment with other people and, and sort of just spe talking about art and and talking about expression and coming out of your shell more and and just sort of having those really productive conversations with other people. Chloe asks Angus, how good technically do you think you need to be, I'm assuming, to study art? Um, you don't have to have really any technical ability. Um, if you can, if you've got good concepts and you're willing to experiment and push yourself, um, the technique's really not that really not that important, especially in the contemporary art world. Um, you know, a lot of the aesthetics of art can be really beyond that idea of art being beautiful or clean or neat. Um, as long as it's sort of profound and interesting and new, that's all that really matters. Um, of course, te technical ability is really important if you want to do make certain styles of work, but for the most part, I would say it's not that important. Somebody asked, what was a typical day at RMIT like for you? Um, so for me, a typical day at RMIT was um, I would go to a class in the morning um, and that would either be sort of like a lecture or a tutorial and then I would go back to my studio space and I'd probably have some lunch and then I'd talk to people and then I'd do some painting and then I might have another class in the afternoon um, and then I'll just sort of do the same thing and it was a really relaxed environment for me which I really enjoyed because you know you can spend as much time in the studios as you like you don't have to be there for class like if you just want to go and paint or make work or just hang out with people um, you can do that and that's what I really liked about it um, okay was the art community good did other students were other students able to work off each other and support each other um yeah absolutely you find you'll find your own clicks you'll find people that you really um gravitate towards and you know even people that you don't think that you would ever be friends with um you might enjoy their work and they'll enjoy yours and that's you know that's how friendship starts how you build relationships in the art community um yeah it's it, it goes beyond sort of being a good artist if that's what some people think it's that's if that's how people think the art community works it's totally wrong it's just it's just like any other friendship you form. You just you connect with people through m anything can be beyond art. Uh, Chloe asks, what do you think needs to be seen in the art world? Um, I don't know if anything needs to be seen right now. I feel like there's just such a diverse, um, there's such a diverse range of work being made, especially in the contemporary world. So, um, Everything, you know, everything will have its phases. Um, right now, installation work's really big, and then obviously digital work is really big, and, and you've got sort of this explosion of um, animation and things like NFTs. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think I enjoy the fact that it's so diverse. I, I, I'm not really sure what I want to see in the, what I want to see more of. Um, somebody has asked, how do students approach making art in lockdown with regards to studios? Um, I have no idea because I actually graduated before the pandemic started. Um, but from what I've seen, it just it's all dependent on you know the lockdowns and how the universities are open or closed. So uh, making work from home is really important. I did I made the majority of the work I've made even during uni was probably from home because you know if you're making art you want to just be doing it all the time so yeah working from home and setting up a studio no matter what sort of space you've got um buy my art materials do all those things that need to be done so you've got a productive art space to work in and you know it's so beneficial okay we've got time for a couple more questions we'll just get through these ones quickly um Somebody asks, uh, Jack asks, 
do you do exhibitions often and how and if so how do you organize something like that um i actually don't really exhibit work a lot um especially after uni in the context of this pandemic it's been really hard to gain opportunities like that um i've done exhibitions through the university and i've done a couple of group shows but yeah really in the past year i've just been focusing on building a body of work um but i am really interested in maybe exhibiting work um, at the end of this year, if all goes well, or the start of next year in maybe like a solo show. Um, and again, it's there are courses at, in fine art to learn those sort of skills about how to approach, you know, small art artist run spaces, how to apply for group shows, how to actually, you know, you'll learn how to put on an exhibition with other students. That's really enjoyable. Um, somebody's asked, how many hours did you paint on average every day? Um, it varies. Sometimes I paint for, you know, up to 10 hours in a day because I feel like doing it. Sometimes I just paint for an hour and then walk away and do whatever. Um, yeah, I don't put that sort of pressure on myself. I just do what feels right. And if I feel like painting, I'll just paint as long as I want. Um, and if I don't, I don't. Um, somebody's asked, what would you say to students at RMIT who have a contemporary lens for art? Are there more technical traditional artists too? Um, of course, yeah. There's a huge range of artists. There's people that are doing more traditional painting of you know, landscapes and portraits and uh, really detailed work. And then students who work with printmaking and sculpture. Um, yeah, I, I always found it was a really diverse range. You'll probably learn more about contemporary art um, just because of it's, I would say it's more relatable and um, it'll probably teach you more skills about how to navigate the art world currently. Um, but yeah, art history is of course like hugely important. Um, got a couple more questions here. Somebody's asked, how many days a week were you studying? Um, I studied about three to four days a week. Um, but like I said, there'd be days where I didn't have classes and I would just go to uni and paint. So it's really up to you. You could, you know, you could spend seven days a week there if you really wanted to. Um, how did you develop, Alana asked, how did you develop your style if you have one? I feel like I don't have a clear sense of direction in terms of art style. Yeah, again, don't worry about art style or aesthetics or anything. That just will come naturally. Um, my whole mantra about making art early on was just to make as much work as possible and diversify um, my practice and just sort of experiment and do as much as possible. Um, yeah, and the, you know that whole appeal about style and aesthetic will just come naturally like it does for all things creative. Lisa asks, I only did unit three and four studio arts in year 12. Am I eligible for communication design, interior design for? Um, I'm probably not equipped to answer that question, to be honest. Um, obviously, you can find out all that information on like the RMIT website or any of those sites that will guide you towards um, the prerequisites for courses. Um, a program like RMIT actually doesn't really require any sort of um, experience in studio arts. You, you know, if you make art and you don't study unit at um, high school, it doesn't matter as long as you've got a really good folio um, and you're willing to you know, talk about art and be, you know, adventurous with it. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, what universities elected? What university electives did you choose? Um, well, everybody does some sort of some form of art history or um, you learn about, you know, the art industry. That's sort of a necessary um, course you have to do. But um, I focused mainly on programs to do with drawing and painting um and yeah like experimenting in those mediums because obviously that's what i'm sort of more passionate about um and chloe asked what type of future is there in art what is the rate of students obtaining work after studying um i'm not sure exactly what a figure like that would be. Um, I know RMIT really do focus a lot on um, industry-based jobs um, post-university. Um, but in terms of a future in art, I think I think that'll really depend on how society continues to to 
evaluate and place value on things like art and design. Um, obviously, we know in the pandemic, it's been really important for people to be able to sort of distract themselves and keep busy by, you know, watching TV shows and movies and listening to music and looking at art and design and, and buying those sort of things as well. So I think there will always be a place for it. Um, it's existed forever and it probably will continue to exist forever, but it's going to be sort of the how society continues to, to value it. Um, I know the, I surround myself with people that do value it, which is really rewarding. Um, and then, you know, studying art will, will make you realize how important it is, not just to yourself, but, you know, to the world in general. Um, well, that's it for the questions. I, uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, again, thank you for all the questions and for watching the video. Um, you can unlock more at the RMIT website through Open Day. Um, there's much more continuing on for t from the, after this video. Um, so please stick around and check out those as well. Thanks, guys.